Hello, my name is Greg Gouillard, and welcome to this Spread Eagle presentation of the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. This is a Week 7 matchup from the Pro South Division. The home bowler is Sean Taylor from right here, Ryan Family Amusements in Millis, Massachusetts. But first, here's the visitor, Steve Reno Jr., representing Central Park Lanes in East Boston. He starts with four horsemen in the nine pin, and we're underway. Just off the head pin, and it's nine down and one to go. As always, the ACST format is five strings, rolled five boxes at a time. The winner of each string receives two match points, and the total pinfall for five strings wins four match points for a total of 14. Steve Reno Jr. rolls a nine box. Any ties result in those points being split, and it's these match points that determine the standings. Box two, straight down the middle. Spread eagle. The regular season is 18 matches long, three against each bowler's rival in their division of four, 12 cross-division matches, and three more division rivalry matches to close the season. That two pin tumbled late, but it's just the four seven remaining. And the wood smashes it back, and that's a 10 box. Steve Reno Jr. goes into this week at the top of his Division 1, currently 54 and 30 for a 64% win rate. That's clobbered in the pocket, and a strike. 10 falls into the 6. That's the way I thought it would go, but all right. So 29 plus the value of these next two balls. the first one. It's on the head pin. A smidge full, but already seven. Two, four, and six. Reno averaging 117 throughout the tournament going into this week. So two more makes a fill of nine. So it's 38 for three. And nine or ten in this fourth box. Ten it is. 48 for four. One more, and then we'll see the first of Sean Taylor. Skipped off the foul line. Eight pin does tumble, so it's four horsemen right side. Smack dab on the three pin. Eight. 56 half. And now here's Sean Taylor, the defending champion of the ACST Pro Division. and 10. Slashes the wood, it got over to the 10, but not quite on the nine as the wood rolls in front. Sean Taylor is third place in his division. He's currently 40 and 44, 48% coming into the sweet seven. Nine box. Averaging 115 to this point. This one washes out quite a few. Yup, the kingpin's gonna fall too. One three remaining. Didn't quite make it to the head. And a nine box, 18 for two. 
John Taylor is currently hanging on to the last wild card spot. Four divisional winners and four wild cards will go through, so theoretically an entire division of four could make it through. Just a 10 pin remaining, big time hit on the head pin. And a nice piece of wood in front. Oh no, but trips on the front piece of wood and doesn't get it. Steven Bodie and Steve Walsh both have that same 48% record and are also sniffing around for that wild card. 28 for three. Gets the head pin anyway, 8-10 and an interesting puzzle with the wood. Quite a few planks laying about. He's gonna play right where I thought he might. Oh, the eight pin gets hit and doesn't drop. One would have thought they would have pinwheeled right into each of the pieces of wood. Not so much. The third ball takes care of it, however. That's it on one hand. And only two pins left standing through the first four frames. This one washes out. One, two, I believe a five back there as well. Seven and ten. Oh, around it, really? Just a ten pin left. Buried it right in the spot. Right in that one, two pocket. Nine it is, and it's a 47 half, so well pinned. Reno Jr.'s mark making the difference so far. This is the first string of five, two match points to the winner of each string. How will Reno build on this? One, three, four, six, seven, nine. That's a common leave where the five jumps right over into a corner pin after almost going half Worcester. Can he turn this six into more? Yes, he jumps it over to the seven and six becomes nine. to his recent matches in just a moment. Box seven. This leaves not quite the same leave, this time the six pin tumble. So it's one, three, four, seven, nine. And it goes, brilliant. Spare in the seventh, his second mark. Week four, Reno squeaked out a 10-4 win against Chris McClellan's 571. So 574 to 571. Phew. Spare fill. Five. Then in week five, 587 against Mike Nardone to win 12 to 2. Leaving just the 510. And then in week six, 574 like week four, but this time the opposite result, 410, because Justin Waters rolled 602. Nine box. <laughs> Fell into the 610 pocket. Good second ball could clear out this cluster. And that's exactly what he does. So nine over par plus this fill ball coming. He 
He's got the head pin this time. Great, Phil. It's nine. And a chance for another. Against the five pin. Yes, it's gone. Spare in the tenth will go to the extra frame. And when Reno Jr. is through, Sean Taylor will have his work cut out for him. Against the four spares of this string. This one's on target. Somehow the five pin doesn't cooperate, but 126, that's the mark to beat for Sean Taylor. Taylor wants a mark. There's a nine pin back there as well, three, five, nine. Wood seems to be filling in the gap, so a shot on the three, five will blow it away just like this. Spare number one for Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor in week four rolled a 601 and eked out a 10 to four win against Ed Woodside, tight margins in that one. Here's the spare fill. And it's eight. 65 for six. Ugly lead of seven, nine. Great oh job. my, he kicks it across and gets it two in a row. In week five, Sean Taylor rolled 622 and a near 12 to two victory over Steve Walsh, the same guy he's jockeying against for the wild card spot going into this week. Smacks it right on the head pin and it's a spread eagle for Phil. Great second ball, will it get the three pin? Not to be. Unfortunately, in week six, uh, Taylor got a crash, hit a 501 against Rich Kochi. 10 box here, 89 for eight. Having, so it was a zero to 14 defeat there. Having averaged 118 prior to that though, Sean Taylor is very capable of a rebound. Left a 7 10. Taylor has been pinning very soundly in that string, but he's going to need marks. Can he kick the wood over? Not to be. Nine down and one to go, and then this looks as though Steve is going to win the first one. Nine box. 98 for nine. It would need to be double strike eight to tie the string. This one washes out, and it's one, two, six, and ten. Gets on the head pin and kicks it over. Ball deflecting off number one. And Sean Taylor will get the extra ball as well. Reno Jr. has won the first string, but this ball will close the gap in the match. It's a seven fill and the final string, 115 for Sean Taylor. Uh, go back to 21 or stay on 22. And that concludes the first of five strings.
Reno will lead off the second string. Left the 2 6 10, the 2 4 7, beg your pardon. That's the other diagonal. Right in the pocket, and he starts off with a spare. There you see the score confirmation. Now, I had a 126, but it's either my error or the automated scores, but in any event, the bowler's score is official. Spare fill for Reno. It's seven. Oh, 110, and the rolling wood gets the nine pin. Another spare. Hey, if you're enjoying what you're watching, and if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button for more bowling. You can also click the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Either way, we greatly appreciate your support just by watching. Five fill on the spare. You see the five pin wiggling away. One, five, six, nine, ten. That plank of wood is going to make it interesting. But not on the head pin. Seven box. Thirty nine for three. Here's Reno. Got a sidewall bounce. One, two, four, nine, and ten. If you get in the pocket, those one and two pins might slice diagonally into the nine and ten. Let's see! Not the nine pin. Nine it is. Still, Reno Jr.'s two marks. Serving him well. Last box of the first half of this string. Sideways on the head pin. Thin contact, that is to say. And it's two, four, and five. That triangular array. Just the five. And it's a 58 half. Sean Taylor, between that 58 and the 11 pin margin from last string, has. How much is it? 67 to make up. That's right, it was a 9 pin margin from last string plus 58. That's 67. Four horsemen right side. Second ball takes out a lot of pins, not the one. Pinned well again. Box two. Big time contact and only the four pin remains. A piece of wood diagonally adjacent to it. And it's gone. Sean Taylor was the runner up on a recent tournament of New England candle pins from here at Ryan's. Spoiler alert. Spare fill is six, it seems to be. He went up against John Blaze and lost by a single pin. Ooh, will it get the eight? Will it? No, it won't. 
277 to 276 was the final score for two strings. Imagine that, Sean Taylor rolled an average of 138, and even that wasn't enough. Thirty-six for three. He grimaces as he lets it go. Not a bad leave. There is a nine pin as well. One, three, six, nine, ten. And it all goes down. That's Sean Taylor's second spare. And look at the mess he's making. Nine to fill. 55 for four. Just shades it left of the pin. That's a foul ball, unfortunately. And a nine box. Nonetheless, a 64 half. And now Reno Jr. is the one with work to do. Box six. A split, unfortunately. Four, six, seven. Unless some magic can happen with the wood lying on the deck. On target, but nothing jumped across. Well, the six pin did, but it jumped behind. A good third ball, 10 box. Steve probably needs at least one more mark. This one thin on the head pin. And it's check mark left side, a two, four, five, and seven. The backwards check mark, in other words. That's gone for a spare. And there it is. Here's the fill. Will the four pin drop? Just five. Serena has had three spares of with fills of seven, five, and five. Needs a third ball here, five down and five to go. And it's seven. Right, turn up. Reno Jr. needs another mark, otherwise Sean Taylor will be able to just pin it. He probably needs another mark at this rate. And that 5-8 might be the way to do it. There is wood in between, so one would think a shot on the 5 would be exactly what is needed. And I spoke too soon, apparently. The wood shot the pin away, and now the 8 is left all by its lonesome. Nine it is. Ninety nine for nine.
wood mix on the head pin here. Just the three pin. The wood is behind, so this needs a direct hit to the pin. And that's exactly what occurs. So at every opportunity, the bowler is going 11. This time it's Steve Reno Jr. in the 10th box of the second string. 109 plus this. And it's 10 on the fill. Strike on spare. Or a 10 fill on the spare as you wish. 119. And a two string total of 243. Just what the doctor ordered, now Sean Taylor needs a mark. This one's on the head pin. Pins dancing in the back, and it's 3 6 remaining. And gone. Never a doubt. Where will he stand after this fill? Here it comes. Sean on the head pin, it's six. Two four goes, just the six ten to go. It's nine. Nine is fine. It does mean that Sean Taylor will need another mark in order to have a chance of winning this string. It's only the second pin he's left standing in the string so far. The head pin got tapped but didn't drop, so it's one, eight, and nine. This is more doable since there's wood in front of the eight. On target, and the head pin is all Taylor gets. Good luck pinning the remaining two. Not that he needs it, 10 box. 99 for eight, so we could tie the string with two tens, we'll see. This one's on the head pin. Is the seven going to drop? Yes, it is. Six, ten. For the mark. Only the ten pin. Still a very important six pin. It's gone. So that is 109 for nine. And now Sean Taylor can split the string with another 10. Or another mark in any fill to win it. This one thin on the head pin and this is the check mark left side. It is sparable. But he cherries the two pins straight back. And how is he going to get 10 out of this? Nine it is, and Reno wins the second string, 119 to 118. scoreboard on this side of things so we don't block Reno Jr.'s view. Your view of Steve Reno Jr., rather. And his third string begins with the two, four, and five. I'm not sure how helpful that piece of wood is, but there's your answer. 
another leadoff spare, Verino, who qualified for the Candlepins for Cancer TV show. Al Johnson, with help from Steve Reno Sr., has already put together one edition of this group tournament. The spare fill is a six, since there's an eight pin hiding back there. And it jumps around the two pin, and it's eight down and two to go. Already one edition of Candle Pits for Cancer has been put together, and you'll soon get to see the second edition from Lita Lane to in Nashua. Nine box. Head over to the YouTube page Alley Chat to watch. Reno Jr. qualified in fourth place, which will start him off with a match against Richie Myrick. Steve might have been holding up two fingers, but he got better than that. One, two, four, and ten. Headpin doesn't generate any action. Two, four, ten. Does the best he reasonably can. Nine brings him to 34 for three. Into the three pin. And it's one, two, and ten. The two pin drops, one ten remaining. Eight it is. Right, one on the seat. Forty two for four. This one's on the head pin. Will the nine drop? Not into the six, but hey, nine down, one to go. Six pin is what stands between Reno Jr. and his mark. And there it is. So he sits down on his spare, 52 in a ball, and here's Sean Taylor, the home bowler, to reply. One, three, six. And gone. Sean Taylor starting his first string, his third string with a spare. His first frame of the third string, I'd like to say. Spare fill right down the middle, if you can believe that. Gets the head pin and is only rewarded with two. Gets three with the second ball. And it's seven. Always tricky when the object pin doesn't cooperate, makes it so much harder to pin. Rebound in the third. He does get a rebound off the sidewall, and that blows out the middle two rows. Now it's 1, 7, 8, and 10. Wood is hanging around between the 1 and 10 pins. And it all goes.
So a second mark. Here's this fill. Oh, it's strike on spare. We saw the power of a strike on spare when Reno did it at the end of the second string. Here it comes here for Taylor. Three marks in this first half. Forty-nine plus two balls. Seven on the first ball. Has an obvious target to his left, if nothing else, to just get the nine. And that's exactly what occurs. So 58 for four. Nine is what it is, so it's a 67 half for Sean Taylor. He's nominally ahead by five pins in the match, but Reno Jr. on a mark. Big question of how high this one will fill. Here it comes. Then on the head pin. Gets good carry. Six fill. And it's a one pin Reno lead. Just on the 6-10. Any piece of that three pin and it was probably going into the five. With the way he cut it over. Nine. I'm just remembering there was one other thing I was going to mention. I'll do it after this frame. One, two, four, and ten. Lost it to the left, unfortunately. Seven down and three to go. Pins it well. Nine makes 76 for seven. Nine box. You notice Reno Jr. wearing that Claret's red shirt. That was from the ICBA tournament he took part in. He was in the 2021 ICBA Adult Championship. He took third in that tournament with 632. the head pin too full. Josh Daly won that tournament 697 for five and Tim Douglas was the runner up in the men's tournament. Kicks it over. Piece of wood rolls in front of the seven. Here comes another one off the plate edge and it's gone. A spread eagle conversion. <laughs> How big will this conversion be? 86 and a ball for eight. And washes out six more. Lost in the excitement, I was about to mention that Aaron Merrill and Shannon Scribner were first and second in the women's tournament at that ICBA championship. Just shaded by. One nine ten is going to be tricky to pin out. And getting the one ten is very good. One hundred one for nine. Horseman in the nine. Very 
very tricky with that extra pin in the back. All right. Two, four, seven, and nine for the third ball. And it's perfectly pinned. 111 is the final string total for Reno Jr. If Sean Taylor got all 10, so it would be 117, so... Does not necessarily need a mark in order to win the string. By the same token, if all Sean Taylor gets is 10s, he would be behind in the match. With lots of match points still to play for. Here's frame six. It's on the head pin. Just the back row remaining, seven, eight, and ten. Wood could make life interesting. It is angled towards the 10. And it all goes. 7, then 10, then 8. Gone, gone, and gone. The spare fill ends up on the 3 pin. Still a 5 fill. Trying to go on the outside of the one pin. And he leaves it all for the third ball. And it's eight. 90 for seven. Late action, lots of late action. The 10 dropped along with two others, and now it's just the four pin all of a sudden. Can Taylor convert this? That's on the wood, of course he can. Brings up 100 in the eighth box and a spare fill to go with it. This is a four fill, all told. Needs just four more pins and that will guarantee him the string victory. There they are. So the minimum is 112 as we speak, plus there's lots of bowling still to go with this string alone. Nine box brings him up to 113. The final frame. One, two, four, six, ten. On the outside of the head pin, and there it goes. And for the fourth time this match, we're going to the extra frame. 123 plus. He'll need to re-rack this one. The head pin tumbled early. Sean Taylor already with a two-pin advantage in the match. And the string easily won. How much higher will he go? Last ball on the head pin. Pin's tumbling late. And it's an eight fill, 131. 20 pin victory for Sean Taylor. And there you see the score sheet after three. Reno Jr., the winner of the first two strings, but Taylor with a big victory in string three, now ahead in the match. Another spread eagle to start off. 
Reno Jr. He gets the 3-6-10, no more magic this time. And it's eight. Blows apart the rack. Strike. Big time hammer. Here's the first fill ball. These bowlers go quick. Not wasting any time mulling over the fill. Though a second ball to try and get more out of this. Looks as though it's four toppled so far. This one's on the head pin. No spare, but the nine fill is valuable. 27 for two. Now 37 for three. Steve's back on the head pin. Oh, but the seven pin doesn't drop. There is wood in front. Still, he would need to slice the six pin very thin. Oh, he goes for the wood. Hang on a second. Oh, it danced in front of the pins. Surprise, surprise. Nine it is, 46 for four. Sean Taylor yelling the encouragement. Head pin hit, two, four, six, and ten. It's always great to see the spirit of sportsmanship in this tournament and in candle pin in general. Eight down two to get. And 10 it is. So a 56 half. The one strike pulling a lot of weight for Steve Reno Jr. and now Sean Taylor for the response. That's on the head pin, my goodness. Just the board again. And Taylor starts off another string with a spare. We've had a lot of spares to start strings. We've had a lot of spares to end strings. Lots of action in between. Taylor to fill. This one misses the head pin but gets a whole lot else. It's an eight fill. And he hit it off the one pin. And it deflected just wide of the seven. That's a foul ball and it's a nine box just grazing the wood in the channel. Could take the lead in the string with just tens. But if Taylor can mow down this bunch, he could do much better than that. There it goes. 37 plus for three. And the fill is on the head pin. And 
nine it is. Can he get the singular eight pin? No! Blocked by the wood. Unbelievable. That's ten. Taylor is frustrated with himself, but you can't say he wasn't unlucky. That said, bowlers know the hazards of wood in front. Comes right back in, 5-9. And that's a spare, and Sean Taylor will be happy to sit down on that. Don't forget, we also broadcast many matches live on the Facebook page Bowling Nerd Network. Reno blows the rack apart for another strike. We broadcast them live on the Facebook page Bowling Nerd Network. To catch our live streams, follow us over at facebook.com slash bowlingnn. That's Bowling Nerd Network, but Bowling NN. Hope to see you there. On a strike. Oh, yeah. Reno gets another one. A double strike. This is where scores can balloon in a hurry. If he gets yet another one for a triple strike, it would go up by 30. And it would be still alive. This first ball is so critical in these situations. Here it comes on the head pin, and can you believe it? It's too full. So four more on the first strike. We'll see the score update with every ball. Pinning really matters in situations like this. Gets seven the strange way with a sidewall bounce. So seven after that ball. And the wood skids away, nine on the third ball. Nine after the third ball, I should say. And when the dust settles, Reno Jr. is left with 106 for eight. A tremendous jolt to the string, although Sean Taylor is still within shouting distance. Six pin tumbles, I think that may complicate the lead, although there is wood hiding back there between the three and the ten. Let's see. On the one three, yes! Pin tumbled too soon. Reno filling a critical spare. Already 26 over par. Sean Taylor 16 over. Here it is on the head pin. Unbelievable. Full on the head pin again. I've lost count of how many spread eagles that is in this match. Reno, oh my goodness, he already made one. He... <laughs> John Taylor quips, you've been getting a lot of practice, haven't you? He sure has. 10 box, 130. Sixty-four for Sean Taylor to get, but has ball in hand. And here it comes. Taylor will need at least one more mark and probably two at this rate. He 
nearly gets it that time. Just the seven pin. And there it is. This one into the three six. One, two, four, and eight, although there is wood. Finds the pocket. See you later. Now, if Sean Taylor gets a nine fill on this, and an average fill will be about six, he wouldn't necessarily need another mark. See how big. Lost it, unfortunately. Two. Right back on the head pin. Not the five. Ten it is, one hundred and three. <laughs> Even those two pins, sure it's disappointing, but it does help. If Sean Taylor gets another mark, that could easily still be enough to take the string. This one's on the head pin. Ay, yeah, yeah, five, seven, eight. It's possible, but there's nothing really to help out. Five, eight. Pin brings him up to 113. So a couple of tens does keep Sean Taylor around. 17 to tie and 18 to win, so a mark is required, but by pinning well, keeps it in the realm of possibility. 247, there is an 8 pin hiding back there. Taylor needs it for a chance to take the string. And gets it! Are you sick of me saying going 11 yet? Here we go again. 7 to tie, 8 to win. Finn on the head pin, oh my, 5 fill. Reno Jr. wins another close one. Look how close the margins have been, and notice that even though Reno Jr. has won three strings, John Taylor's 20-pin margin in the third string still keeping him ahead in the match. Reno starts off string five. One, three, six, eight, ten, a.k.a. the Kaliri. Just gets the four horsemen. And a ten to begin. Again, thank you so much for watching this presentation today of Spread Eagle Productions. Please do leave a comment with any feedback. Encourage you to give us a like and uh, subscription as well. You know where the buttons are on YouTube. We're grateful. My goodness, Reno Jr. gets the head pin. What does he left with? Three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Maybe the wood makes it possible, but he hit the six pin. How do you get an out out of this? Goodness, even the wood didn't cooperate. Six gives him 16 for two. Oh. 
on target. It's another full hit on the head pin. Two four kicks it across. He's putting good second balls on all these spread eagles. And turns this one into 10. 26 for three. This one's on target. How about the seven pin? Yes, it's gonna fall. Just a nine pin to go. Now, where's this wood going? It's straight in front of the plate. These can always be difficult when they straighten out like that. Although a hit on the red line should take it right back. And that's exactly what occurs. First spare of the string for Reno. Big Phil. Forty five for four. And that's gone. Serino so Jr. sits down on a spare. Fifty five for five. And now Sean Taylor comes up. Starts off on the head pin, they all go. <laughs> Opening strike. Eight down and two to go. Seven and eight. Tried to hit the tip of the wood so that it would spin maybe off the sidewall and into the seven and eight. So it eight fill on the strike, nine fill on the box. And it's 27 for two. One, six, seven, and nine. A couple of woods. Pieces of wood hanging out end first. Six drops. Nine doesn't. Now wood moving back and forth. Not quite angled but straight. It's 10, got around it. We've seen how that pinning so nearly gave Sean Taylor a chance to win that last string. This leave is ridiculous, 6-7. Oh my goodness gracious! He cut it in! Hits one end and the seven pin gets clobbered on the other end. Unbelievable. And this fill takes out seven more. Reno makes a spread eagle, Taylor makes a 6-7, what next? Now, Sean Taylor goes open here, this is a 9 box, 63 second half, 
and again Reno Jr. in the catbird seat here. This time he's eight behind, but with ball in hand. Here's the fill, then we'll know where we stand. Oh my, is he going to get the exact eight? Yes, he is. Tie string. Which means Taylor maintains his same eight pin advantage in the match. Kicks the wood across in front of the 10. Setter malfunction. And we are back. The technical issues have been sorted by the great team here at Ryan's. You going the other way? Yeah, yeah. Reno Jr. now ready to bowl his second for his seventh frame. On the head pick. Front. It is angled towards the 10, but then what do you do about the 8? Oh, that's what! How about the sidewall? A little pinball action! Unbelievable! Is any spare truly impossible today? This is unbelievable! 83 plus for Reno Jr. This fill crushes the head pin. Eight and nine. Seven pin remains for another. And he just scooted by in the left channel. Two for eight. Okay, well, no. Reno Jr. likely to go over six hundred. Sean Taylor easily might as well. This is five, seven, eight, and ten. Good luck with that. Although, again, you never know. I don't know anymore. They're making so many shots. I don't know what's truly a spare leave. See? He got three out of this. Unbelievable. Just the ten pin remains. Ten. 112 for nine. Two, four, and ten for the final leave. Then the visitor from Central Park Lanes will sit down. Reno found the head pin. Couldn't kick it into the ten pin. It stands again. And stay down. 122. Final series. 606. And Sean Taylor gets up, needing at least one mark for. Let me rephrase that. Sean Taylor, if he gets tens, would get 605 for the total and 113 in the string. So he needs at least one mark to get any match points here out of this. Remember, Reno has won three strings, but Taylor's 20-pin margin in the third currently 
keeping him afloat. To say the very least. That's a big time washout. Eight down and now just the one two to get. Can he get the mark here? Yes, another outside beauty. Sean Taylor placing a number of good shots on the outside of the head pin. Let's put that spare on the board for him. There it is. Let's do what I should have done in the first place and move the scoreboard over here. Here it is, clobbering the head pin. Eight fill. Four ten? Nope. the channel. 90 for 7. Oh. Whoops. Three frames left to get that mark. on the head pin. Five, eight. And Taylor gets left with a seven, ten. That sends the wood back into the curtain. Still the same two to get. And there they stay, 98 for eight. frames remaining. As it is, Sean Taylor can now pin out a match victory. Can he get the remaining two, presuming he pins out well, can he get the remaining two for the string victory? This leaves the four horsemen right side. Still the same four. It's a big third ball. And it's on the head pin. Doesn't get anything else, unfortunately. And I beg your pardon, that should be 105. So 17 to tie and 18 to win. See the significance of the third ball. Now it's led us to this moment. Okay. So Sean Taylor needs a 10 to win the match, but a spare to have a chance at the string. The second ball. Spare! Okay. That has decided the total pinfall. Sean Taylor will win those four match points. Now, seven to tie and eight to win. The final ball washes out and it's six and Steve Reno Jr. gets another close victory. Jesus Christ. Two for the string. Sean Taylor, four match points for the match. Now let's show you the final scores. 21, right? Yes. There you see the final scores on your screen. Sean Taylor, 613. Reno Jr., 606. Look at all those tremendous numbers these two bowlers put up. What great shot making. For Spread Eagle Productions, my name is Greg Guyar. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again for more Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour action and lots of other bowling action as well. Until next time, bye-bye.